Hey traders, let's talk today about stock splits. Now, I know this is quite intriguing because recently you heard about the 20 to 1 split in Amazon. And you're wondering, probably wondering, what should you do about it as traders? So we're going to touch that. We're going to talk about how you can make money from the stock split in Amazon and what will happen next when other companies are going to announce about stock splits. We need to understand that as traders and I'm going to take you through this very quickly so that you can understand what is the potential and what you can do. The first thing I'm going to talk about is a reverse split, which you don't normally hear a lot of a lot. Now we did hear about Amazon and Amazon is a forward split and I'm going to talk about the forward split soon, but let's first discuss a reverse split very quickly because there's not much for you as a trader to do that but you do need to understand now take a look at Citigroup Citigroup if I go back started at around uh, I mean look at this price over here it shows here five four four dollars but actually it was four times lower than that and then it came down and again it shows here the price of eleven dollars close to $12 and the actual price was really three or four dollars because it went through a reverse split at the point where Citigroup was at around three or four dollars they have announced a reverse split which means that they take each stock like four dollar stock and then tomorrow if you had like 10 stocks um, 10 stocks each worth four dollars you now own just one stock after the split you own one stock worth of forty dollars so they, they they just changed the price that's it they did not change the value of the company nothing has changed same as like it still is the same company it still makes as much as it made money before it still is the same company nothing changed just the price of the stock so if you had 10 stocks worth four dollars now the day after the split you have just one stock worth forty dollars why should they do that well it's because mainly because institutional traders and other people in the market investors and so on do not like to buy stocks which are worth less than ten dollars it is a very important thing you need to know about that uh, it has nothing to do with the splits it has to do with the fact that stocks under ten dollars are disregarded in the market we call them dogs and why do we call them dogs we call them dogs because normal stock under ten dollars has uh, low volume and it cannot be bought by institutional traders. Institutional traders, 90% of them cannot buy stocks under $10 and 95% of them cannot buy stocks under $5. And you need to remember these numbers. They are very important numbers. Now, normally institutional traders require a lot of volume because they need to come in and out with a lot of volume. They cannot buy 1,000 shares and run billions of dollars of funds money they need a lot of volume so normally they need a stock over ten dollars and over one million shares of volume per day now normally stocks under ten dollars just don't have that they don't have the volume they are cheap and probably most people disregard them some people trade penny stocks some people take trade stocks under ten dollars I personally think it's wrong because you do not have the support of the institutional traders you need the support of the institutional traders you need to know the rules you need to know how they trade and what they do and they only affect stocks over ten dollars and over one million shares of volume and when they do affect then you know what you should do as a trader and you can make money from that knowledge but that's another story I'm not going to get into this um, I have talked enough about this how to follow the institutional traders and I base all my knowledge and my practice and my systems on what institutions do or don't do and for that again I require that my traded stocks should be over ten dollars and over one million shares now sometimes you have big companies like Citigroup who crashed during the financial crisis but they don't want to stay at under ten dollars for several reasons one of the reasons is when the stock is too cheap and you have a lot of volume people could use it in order to gain only from adding liquidity to the market now if you haven't heard about this system there is a trading system but it requires the stock to be very low priced and very high volume like Sisti group was and then the problem is people are are, are, are adding liquidity at millions of shares per second at any price that the stock is traded traded at and then they are kind of locking the price of the stock now when the stock is price is getting locked because there's a lot of offers on the bid and a lot of 
offers on the on, on the ask then a stock price is just getting locked in between one or two cents and that's it and Citigroup <laughs> remained in the three to four dollar range for I don't know how long and they just decided they want out of it now the way to get out of it is of course a reverse split because now one day the stock worth four dollars the next day it falls four it costs $40, but when it comes up to $40, you have also just one-tenth of the number of shares in the market. And that also means that the volume is dramatically coming down, spreads are created, not too big, I mean, Citigroup is a huge company, so the spread is still very, very low, but you do not find the intra-spreads in between the cents and so on, like you could find it in uh, when it costs just 3 or $4. So, uh, when the stock is cost forty dollars, it's like a normal stock now. Investors could buy it, traders could buy it. It's not locked between a few cents every day, and therefore Citigroup got out of this mess. And now, if you take a look at the price of the stock, you can see that it is traded around forty, uh, sorry, fifty-five dollars or so. Anyway, this is a reverse split, and you do not hear much about it because it's very hard for a company to move from being under. $10 to over $10. Again, if a stock just costs $5 and it wants to become a $10 stock tomorrow, it's very easy, just to reverse split. But what about the volume? The volume will also remain low. The volume now that was, let's say, half a million shares at uh, $5 because it's under $10, let's say just 500,000 shares, okay? 500,000 shares. Now you reverse split it, the volume comes down to 250,000 shares. So anyway, when you reverse split it, you're losing volume. So if you have a stock that's worth under $10, let's say $5, and the volume is of several millions of shares per day, yes, you can reverse split it. And that's why you don't find stocks under $10 with a lot of volume, unless it's a big company like Citigroup, crash down and so on, lots of stories, but normally you just don't find them. And that's why institutional traders don't trade them. So, Concentrate on stocks over $10 and over 1 million shares of volume. Learn the way that the institutional traders are operating so you could come out with solid trading systems which are based on 80% of the volume. So don't get stuck in penny stock ideas. Look for the real stock that real traders trade. Now let's move to the forward split and see what happened there. And let's take a look at Amazon. Now here is Amazon. You can see that it is trading at around $3,300 right now. So Amazon's price is extremely high. Amazon does not want its stock to cost over $3,000. Why? Because it's very expensive. Because a lot of people just can't afford buying an Amazon stock at $3,000. So a lot of investors who want to, you know, um, trade several stocks or hold several stocks, you know, diversify their portfolio with several stocks, just don't hold Amazon because it's just too expensive. If you have a $10,000 investment and in stocks and you just can't have just one stock which is cost over three thousand dollars you want to diversify and Amazon has a problem because it's too expensive so Amazon would like to get to the point where it costs much less and then they decided to go for a 20 to 1 forward split a 20 to 1 forward split remember earlier we talked in the case of Citigroup at a reverse split now we're talking about a forward split means that if you own one share of Amazon at $3,000, let's say $3,000, tomorrow you will own 20 shares of Amazon at $150. Now, what is the benefit? Of course, the price is much lower now. So, maybe some people who couldn't afford Amazon before can afford it now at $150 or $60 or $70. Now that will bring in more people and more volume. But on not only that, when the stock price is cheap, just $150, the spreads become minimal. And when the spreads become minimal, you may start thinking about the way you could trade Amazon. Because until now, if you try to take to trade Amazon, just the difference between the bid and ask could be several points. And you just click on the button, you're down three points, and then maybe it's going to go up, maybe it's not. It is very risky to trade a stock that has such a huge spread. Now, if you just 
if you take the price down to $150, then the spreads become minimal because the volume grows 20-fold. Then the volume is much higher, the spreads become lower, you can trade it, you can invest in it, and Amazon will only gain from that. Now, Amazon announced a, a stock split recently, but uh, it didn't yet happen. To announce a stock split is quite simple. You just, uh, the management decides and then the directors approve and that's it. And then they announce it on the stock market. They are a publicly traded company. They need to announce it. And it will come as probably they said it's going to come out on, on the 3rd of June 2022. So we still have some time to work, to wait. Now, as a trader, what should you do when you hear about a stock split? Normally, buy. Why should you buy? Because... You know the benefits. The benefits are that a lot of people will get into the trade, will get into Amazon, will, will buy. So normally a stock split means that more people will buy it. Now, look at what happened. The announcement happened on the uh, 9th, after the market time, on the 9th of March, just really this month. So if you take a look at Amazon right over here, you can see... Well, this is the ninth right here, and the announcement happened overnight after trading session was over, and then you can see that it gapped up approximately 5% the day later, so from here to there, and then you can see that it kept going higher and then came down. Now, it came down really because Amazon also announced that they're going to do a buyout of $10 billion. Market doesn't normally like to hear about companies buying their own shares, and there's other reasons for that, because normally those who do buy the shares, the institutional traders, are trying to drive at least the beginning the price down so they could buy cheap, and if they buy cheap, they get extra commission from the company, and so on. I, again, I'm not going to get into this, but it's again understanding the way that institutional traders are working. So it gapped up, came down a little bit, not by much, and then spike like crazy. And this is what usually happens when a company announces about a stock split. Now you can go back and see that in, 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 in Tesla and in other companies and you can see what happened when the company announced a stock split. Now it's not uh, an intraday event. It could become an intraday event. Now I'm, I'm going to talk about, let's talk about you as, a, as an intraday trader, then let's, let's talk about investors and let's talk about swing traders. So mainly a stock split is great for swing traders. Swing traders should, at a stock split, normally buy some shares and wait for several days or several weeks, because normally the price should go higher. People love it, the market love it, the market will start buying. Today, I traded Tesla long. Tesla had a rumor that it's going to have a stock split soon, just a rumor that it's going to have a stock split soon. I went long, it was my best trade today. Just to prove, here's the result. I just made $13,000 in Tesla and uh, a little bit more in NVIDIA. NVIDIA has nothing to do with split. Tesla popped up today like crazy because there is just a rumor that Tesla is about to uh, go through a, a forward slip, split. So anyway, you are supposed to go long when, uh, when, 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 you, when, when you hear about a stock split. Of course, you can't do it the day of the announcement. Normally, it's going to be uh, in between two trading sessions. So the next day, it's going to gap up. Be careful of the next day. There could be some profit taking. Uh, it did come down later also because of the buyout. I mentioned that earlier. But then you look for a reversal and you go long as long as the stock keeps moving. So if you're a swing trader, you just find the right technical formation. Normally, do not buy the day after. Wait until it comes down and then goes up again. Again. And if it doesn't do that, just you lost a, a, a trade, but it happens. And, and just find the right technical formation and go long. If you are an intraday trader, look for the next several days for opportunities. There will be opportunities, intraday opportunities, next few days. Don't trust it to crash. Just look for it to move up. Uh, if it's gapping up, look for a gap and go. If it's just trending higher, join somewhere if you find a nice technical formation and so on. So for you as an intraday trader, you've got now plenty of days looking to go long 
long in the stock that you trade. Of course, watch the market, watch the S&P 500, make sure that the S&P 500 also moves higher. I mean, do everything that is required, but normally you will find several days of going long the stock. Don't go short. Now, if you're a swing trader, that's a different time frame, of course, and then be extremely careful from the day of the announcement. Now let's talk about Tesla. Tesla has announced a five to one split at the beginning of August 2020, which was right over here. The price you're seeing here is around $275, but that was four, five times higher because it was a five to one split. Now look at what happened the next day. It just jumped up and again, it was before the, the split has happened. The split happened really at the end of August. We're talking about the beginning of August here, and this is when the split really happened, 31st of August. Look at the crash again. Look at the beginning, the announcement. Look at the way it spiked up. Now remember, now it just reached $500. So the price now is five times $500. And then a day later, every share that was worth at that point around $2,500 now is worth just $500. So Tesla split took the price down five times. Now, again, the announcement, the way it spiked up, a lot of opportunities here, intraday opportunities, swing opportunities, and all, even long-term opportunities. And then at... This was the announcement. And then at the execution date, which was the 31st of, uh, of August, it just crashed down. And this is what normally happens on the date of execution. The date where the stock is actually worth one-fifth of the price it was worth yesterday. And of course, you get five stocks to every share, so nothing really happened. But what did really happen is one of the oldest tricks in the book, which is buy the rumor, sell the news. Well, it's not really a rumor, rumor because they told me it's going to be splitted soon, but still did not happen. So you buy, you buy the rumor, in this case, an announcement, but you sell the news, in this case, the execution date. So you buy that point, you sell at this point, or you go short, or you get out of your swing at the day of the execution itself. So this is a pattern which normally happens. So if you're looking for splits, normally think in this direction. We don't care much about reverse splitting. Uh, unless you are a trader who works on adding liquidity, and that's quite rare. We do care about the fact that stocks which will go through a forward slip will likely move higher after the announcement. I traded Tesla today, and probably the next few days are going to be very interesting in trading Tesla. And then you wait for the price to drop down at the date of execution, because we as traders, we should know that this should affect the price of the stock. And Tesla did continue higher, of course, after that drop down. If I will continue and I'll take you to the next moves of Tesla, you can see how Tesla did continue higher. And this is right now where we are. So Tesla is uh, currently over $1,000. You remember we talked about $500 earlier. Now it just doubled its price after the split, but that doesn't necessarily have to do with the fact that its price was splitted. However, if it, if they did not go through a split, the price today would have been $5,000 per share. Now, who would buy Tesla at $5,000 per share? And what is the slippage and so on? So that's exactly why they're thinking again of a split. And this is Again, a good reason to go long at that point if you are a swing trader, a day trader, look at the intradays and so on. And at the date of the split execution, you should look for shorts or get out of your swing trade. So we talked about two ways of splitting a stock. We talked about the reverse split and the forward split and uh, the difference between them. And again, we are concentrating on the forward slips, splits, which are much more interesting. And we do have some interesting opportunities to trade there, either if you are a day trader or a swing trader. I hope you like this video and I hope you appreciate it enough to give me a like. 
if you give us a like it will help this channel and will help more people like you learn about day trading and you're also very welcome to subscribe to this channel there's a button right here and if you're going to click on the notification bell you will be notified of my future uploads and if you are interested in day trading plenty more videos in my youtube channel and plenty of links right here below like if you want to trade the same platform i trade start with the demo trading is hard enough don't risk your own hard-earned money there's a link here for the colmex platform the same platform i'm using and plenty of other links that you can use thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video